I don't think they can see me yet. Good morning. Good morning. Today is Monday, January 4th, 2021, and welcome to the County of San Diego swearing in of newly elected county supervisors. My name is Andrew Potter, and I'm the clerk of the Board of Supervisors and will be the MC for this morning. Today, the newly elected county supervisors representing districts one, two, and three will be sworn in. The protocol for the swearing in will be such that each supervisor elect will be sworn in, then they will be provided time to share some remarks as they begin their term on the Board of Supervisors. We will first begin by swearing in Supervisor-Elect Nora Vargas, representing the 1st District. Following Supervisor-Elect Vargas, District 2 Supervisor-Elect Joel Anderson will be sworn in at 10.20 a.m. And District 3 Supervisor-Elect Tara Lawson-Reamer will be sworn in at 10.40 a.m. While we all would have enjoyed holding this event in person due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the event is being held virtually. Up first today will be Supervisor-Elect Nora Vargas, representing the 1st District. Supervisor Lech Vargas will be sworn in by her goddaughters, Fatima Jimenez and Farah Jimenez. Fatima and Farah, you may begin to administer the oath when you are ready. First of all, it is an honor for my sister Farah and I to be here this morning to administer the oath of office to our Nina. She has been an inspiration for both of us, and there is no place I would rather be than here to see her make history as the first Latina, first woman of color, and first immigrant to serve on this body. On behalf of our family, thank you to the County of San Diego for allowing us to be part of this. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Nora Vargas. I, Nora Vargas. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support and defend. That I will support and defend. The Constitution of the United States. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California. Against all enemies. Against all enemies. Foreign and domestic. Foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance. That I will bear true faith and allegiance. To the Constitution of the United States. To the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California. That I take, take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation. Without any mental reservation. Or purpose of evasion. Or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully. And that I will well and faithfully. Discharge the duties. Discharge the duties. Upon which I'm about to enter. Upon which I'm about to enter. <laughs> Oh, oh my goodness. How exciting. Um, buenos dias. Good morning. Um, I would like to ask everybody to join me in a moment of silence to honor the many lives lost to this global pandemic. Thank you. Thank you for, for um, joining me. I hold all those families and their friends close to my heart and to all those that are fighting for their lives in our hospitals and to those that are home isolating and nervous about having been diagnosed with COVID, I send you my blessings and well wishes for a healthy recovery. You have my commitment that I will do everything I can so that you and your families have access to county resources so that not only you may survive while you're trying, they may survive while you're trying to heal. Never would I have imagined that I would be taking this oath virtually, but our communities have been hit hard and we all must do our part to do everything in our power to fight this global pandemic that has highlighted existing inequities in our healthcare system. I wanna thank our first responders, our healthcare providers, our healthcare workers, our essential employees, our grocery workers, our farm workers, our community organizations and our county employees that have been on the front lines day in and day out for months now, putting their own lives at risk to ensure that we are safe and healthy. All of you are the epitome of the county's motto, the novelist motive is the public good. To all of our family owned businesses that are the economic engine of this community that are hanging by a thread, thank you for all your sacrifices. They have not gone in vain. I know these last couple of months have not been easy and it has been terribly frustrating as you are trying to keep your businesses afloat and your families safe and healthy. 
I will continue the fight to obtain the relief you need to keep operations going and recover from losses, as well as provide support to ensure you are able to reopen safely. And to our teachers that have gone above and beyond to support our families during these challenging times, thank you. Thank you for being there for our students. Today, I humbly take this oath, understanding that there is so much at stake and that these are challenging times, but I'm up for the task. I take this obligation freely without any mental reservation, and I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of my role and beyond. I stand before you committed to governing with intentionality, integrity, empathy, transparency, y con muchísimo corazón, and a commitment to overall challenge the status quo. We are at a crossroads. We must work, work together collectively to break down the barriers, policies, and procedures that for years have disproportionately impacted the health and economic well-being of our communities. We are highly divided and polarized as a society. But here we are, we have an opportunity to stop the rhetoric, to stop politicizing public health, and we have hope by way of a vaccine that is the safest and most effective way to combat um, COVID-19. And to the pandemic that has always existed, systemic racism, we must do everything in our power to dismantle it. Our county has an absolute responsibility to act and lead with intention. The disparity gap continues to widen in our communities from children going to sleep hungry, students and teachers sleeping in their cars because the rent is still too high, to our families going to emergency rooms instead of having access to their own doctors and affordable health care. Our communities have been impacted by environmental just injustices for decades. Now our communities in District 1 have been disproportionately affected by COVID and this pandemic has really magnified the housing and wage inequities and the health disparities that have impacted many of our zip codes for years. As your county supervisor, mitigating the impacts of the pandemic and focusing on economic recovery are my priority. Es un tremendo honor estar aquí con ustedes. Estoy eternamente agradecida con todos los votantes del Distrito 1 por la oportunidad de representarlos. Como la primera mujer inmigrante, la primera mujer de color y la primera latina. Orgullosamente fronteriza en la historia de la Junta de Supervisores del Condado de San Diego. Soy la primera, pero definitivamente no seré la última. Como le comenté a un gran número de votantes durante la campaña, cuando tocaba puertas o les llamaba por teléfono, Estoy comprometida a hacer todo lo posible para retomar su fe en el gobierno y sus gobernantes. It is an honor for me to stand before you. I am grateful to the voters of District 1 for entrusting me with the opportunity to represent them. As an immigrant, the first woman of color, the first Latina with a binational background to represent them and to serve in the history of the Board of Supervisors in San Diego County, I am humbled and ready to serve. I may be the first, but I will absolutely not be the last. And as I said to many of the voters in District 1, while knocking on doors or while speaking to them on the phone, I am committed to doing everything I can to restore their faith in government, and they have my commitment as a public servant that I will do everything I can by them. Many said to me, all right, Nora, we're going to give you an opportunity. Just don't let us down. Don't take us for granted. So many politicians knock on our doors when they want something, and then they forget about us. And as I said to them, my commitment and passion for public service and civic engagement goes deeper than this election. It was instilled by me by my parents. Family is everything to me. And that's what this campaign was rooted on. And as I transition into governance, my commitment is unwavering. Families will always be first. I want to thank my goddaughters, Fatima and Farah, for administering the oath this morning. This is now a family tradition. They are my good luck charms and my inspiration every day to make the world a little better. To my sisters, Erika and Frida, and to my brother Eduardo, mil gracias por su constante apoyo durante esta trayectoria, que a veces ha sido muy pesada. Y como familia, estos últimos dos años nos hemos enfrentado con muchísimos retos, pero juntos hemos salido adelante. Les agradezco por su apoyo constante. Your love and support grounds me, and I thank you for that. As our parents taught us, we are stronger together. And I stand on the shoulders of so many, grateful for my comadres, my friends, my coaches, my mentors, and all of those that have been by my side on this journey. My pillars 
have always been my angel mama who's looking over us and guiding us. And my dad, que uh, si Dios quiere me está viendo, quiero que sepas que estoy aquí lista para tomar las riendas y comprometida con firmeza a hacer un verdadero cambio. Muchísimas gracias y te quiero mucho. I am proud of having a long history of bringing people together to develop innovative solutions and removing barriers for underserved communities through civic engagement, public policy, and community organizing. I have been in our communities doing the real work on the ground that impacts daily lives for over two decades, and that's not gonna change. I'm going to continue to be a first advocate for our communities. Our path to recovery from this global pandemic will not be easy, and it requires us to come together and develop innovative solutions as our county rebuilds and works to our collective future in a change environment. I'm committed to hitting the ground running on day one, and I will ensure that as we seek a path to prosperity, that economic stimulus be provided to support the recovery of small business and nonprofit organizations and everyone in our community. As your supervisor, I'm gonna to fight to ensure that the county is providing our communities with the resources they need and deserve. I wanna thank Supervisor Greg Cox, his family and his team for his over two decades of service to our communities. I appreciate the assistant, assistance him and his staff provided me during this transition. I wish you the best, sir. Um, I know those are uh, big shoes to fill, but I'm ready for it. And I thank you. Thank you for your work for District 1. I stood before many of you about two years ago in the heart of Chula Vista, and I asked you to join me as I launched my campaign to the San Diego County Board of Supervisors, District 1. I asked you not only to join me on this journey, but I asked you to join a movement a movement to build healthier and stronger communities. I shared with you that government wasn't working for our families and that I was running because I was determined to help build a county where every child with a dream would have access to resources to help them achieve it. A county where we don't just survive, but we actually thrive. A county that is responsive to the needs of our communities and where families don't ever feel helpless, where resources and answers are always available because I believe that government is not something separate from, from us, it's, it is us. It is our county and it should work for all of us. A vision for healthier and strong communities isn't just a slogan, it's a commitment that I have made to this community and that I will strive to achieve for our collaborative work with our residents, business community, healthcare community, and other regional and civic stakeholders. My passion to serve is driven by my desire to improve people's lives in our communities and I know that together we can make transformational change. I want every young person in this county to know that I'm going to fight for them to make sure that they have the same opportunities that this country has afforded me. I want every family to know that in me, they will have an advocate on the Board of Supervisors looking out for them every day. And only as a community can we make the shift. Chicana author Sandra Cisneros said, we do this because the world we live in is a house on fire and the people we love are burning. And we cannot stand on the sidelines while those we love are hurting. We have a responsibility to be better and to do better. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Supervisor-Elect Vargas. We will resume the broadcast at 10.20 a.m. for the swearing in of Supervisor-Elect Joel Anderson. Thank you.
Good morning, Mr. Anderson. We see you've just joined. And if you want to test your video roll briefly. Up next will be Supervisor-Elect Joel Anderson, representing the 2nd District. Supervisor-Elect Anderson will be sworn in by former State Senator Mark Weiland, who represented the 38th District in the California State Senate. Mr. Weiland, you may begin to administer the oath when you are ready. Uh, it's great pleasure to uh, administer this oath today, not only because Joel is my friend of more than two decades, but uh, as colleagues together in the Senate, my former seatmate, I saw someone who not only did uh, an outstanding job representing his constituents, but was able to tackle seemingly insurmountable problems successfully. And we sort of joke sometimes when I would say, you can't do that, but sure enough, he did. So with a uh, great, great pleasure, Joel, uh, please uh, say after me, I So you say I and then your name, I, Joel Anderson. Mr. Anderson, we're having a, a problem hearing you. We're not hearing your audio. I'm ready as soon as it's corrected. Can, uh, can you hear me better now? We can hear you fine, thank you. Can, oh, excellent, good. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll begin again. And, and uh, I want to acknowledge, as you will, your wife Kate is there as well, which is wonderful. Uh, so please repeat after me. I. In your name? I, Joel Anderson. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support and defend. I will support and defend. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of California in the Constitution of the State of California. Against all enemies. Against all enemies. Foreign and domestic. Foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance. I will bear true faith and allegiance. To the Constitution of the United States. To the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation. Without any mental reservation. Or purpose of evasion. Or purpose of evasion and that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties. And that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties. Upon which I am about to enter. Upon which I'm about to enter. 
Congratulations, Senator Anderson, Supervisor for the uh, Second District. Thank you, Mark. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Mark. It, it was my pleasure, Abs, all the way along. It was my pleasure. Well, uh, Mark, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you and and uh, all your efforts helping me get elected. And I want to thank you mostly for helping mentor me while I was in the legislature. You've been a great friend. And I also want to thank Diane Jacob for her 28 years of service. You know, all those years, you know, she put our district first. She worked hard for us. And I just want to thank her for all her efforts. I also would like to, my wife uh, uh, bugged out of the screen, but I wanted to thank my wife, Kate, and our children. Uh, public service sometimes can play a toll on one's family, and, and they've always been so supportive of me, and it, it means so much to me, and I'm grateful to have been married for 32 years to, to this lovely woman and, and my kids and my family who have all supported me. I also like to thank the people of the second district. You know, uh, they have uh, honored me with the privilege of serving them again. And I'm gonna live up to, the, to every obligation that I made, uh, all my campaign promises, because they deserve it. They deserve somebody fighting for them all the time. And I, I, I know that we're facing tremendous challenges in the county, whether it's COVID, homelessness, or attainable housing, but we're gonna be laser focused on those issues delivering for our community. And I also uh, want to say how much I look forward to my new colleagues. I've met with each and every one of them. They're wonderful people. They, they are absolutely focused on solving problems. And so I know that even though these challenges are great, together we'll climb that hill and we'll solve these problems for all San Diegans. And finally, I'd like to thank our CAO, Helen uh, Robbins Mayor. Uh, and I also want to thank uh, the clerk of the board, Andrew Potter, both of whom went out of their way over the last month to make our transition smooth and easy. And I look forward to working with them in the years to come. So with that, uh, I've got work to do. You're counting on me showing up uh, day one and, and I'm gonna, I wanna get going right now. So thank you again for the privilege and it's a great honor to be here. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor-elect Anderson. We will resume the broadcast at 10.40 a.m. for this morning in of Super Supervisor-elect Lawson Reamer. Thank you. Thank you.
Up next will be Supervisor-Elect Tara Lawson-Reamer, representing the 3rd District. Supervisor-Elect Lawson-Reamer will be sworn in by Senator Tony Atkins, who represents the State Senate District 39 and serves as the California Senate President Pro Tem. Supervisor-Elect Lawson-Reamer will also be sworn in by Judge M. Margaret McEwen of the United States Court of Appeals for the Ninth Circuit. Senator Atkins and Judge McEwen, you may begin to administer the oath when you are ready. Thank you. It's an incredible honor to join Judge McEwen to uh, swear in Tara Lawson-Reamer. Tara, are you ready? Yes. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. I, Tara Lawson-Reamer. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. Will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of California and the Constitution of the State of California. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance. That I will bear true faith and allegiance. To the Constitution of the United States. To the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California that I take this obligation freely, that I take this obligation freely, without any mental reservation, without any mental reservation, or purpose of evasion, or purpose of evasion, and that I well and faithfully, and that I well and faithfully, discharge the duties, discharge the duties, upon which I am about to enter. Upon which I am about to enter. Congratulations. Congratulations from both of us. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, it's really an honor to be here today and a privilege to serve as the next San Diego County Supervisor for District 3. Thank you. Um, I would not be here without the support and tireless work of many thousands of friends and neighbors and colleagues who came together to fight for a better future. Our generation faces existential challenges, a pandemic that has killed hundreds of thousands and driven countless others into poverty, destroying businesses and jobs and dreams, driving suicide and despair, and stranding our children in social and academic limbo including my 18 month old daughter who has spent nearly half her life secluded, struggling with a communication learning disability that cannot be addressed under the social isolation of COVID-19. Climate crisis that defines existential. If we cannot rise to meet this moment, if we cannot decarbonize our economy and our society and pivot towards a green future that puts us in harmony with our ecosystems. We will leave our children a planet ravaged by wildfires and rising sea levels, extreme heat waves and famines, and even more deadly pandemics. Skyrocketing inequality, where many middle and working class families with good jobs live paycheck to paycheck, and nearly 40% of households are underwater with negative assets. The wealthiest 1% in the United States now own 40% of all wealth, and inequality is higher today than at any time in our history since the Gilded Age, <clears throat> whose excesses led to the Great Depression. And at the same time, we face an erosion of a shared understanding of truth and reality, which is the bedrock of civility and democracy. We stand also at a major crossroads in determining our quality of life and the future of San Diego County. Affordable housing, traffic and congestion, and protecting our beaches and open spaces are all urgent priorities fundamental to our future. But despite the challenges we face and the adversities of this past year, I am hopeful. The most feared childhood disease of this past century, polio, was defeated by the dogged pioneering research of Jonas Salk, 
founder of the Institute for Biological Studies right here in San Diego. And today, once again, research scientists from across San Diego County have been on the front lines in the global fight against COVID-19. We now have a vaccine, and while it will be many months before our lives can return to normal, this is the fastest development of a vaccine that the world has ever seen. This is the triumph of ingenuity and science and the tireless work of tens of thousands of researchers worldwide, despite the catastrophic political failure of leadership in Washington that fueled the pandemic and allowed the virus to spread in the first place. But we have a new president and new leadership on our County Board of Supervisors committed to partnering with science. And while we still have a long dark road ahead, there is now light at the end of the tunnel. It is this human potential that gives us hope. The leadership of millions of young people, including some of the high school and college organizers on my own campaign team, who are joining together to demand that we act right now without one more day of delay to end carbon emissions. The innovative breakthroughs of researchers who have shown us a path to a zero carbon economy, a path that creates good new green jobs for working class and middle class San Diegans, a path that puts social equity first and raises all boats, a path to a new economy that is both more fair and more sustainable. The community leaders, entrepreneurs, the organizers, the thinkers, the doers of San Diego County who work every single day to improve the well-being and quality of life of everyone across our region. California is the fifth largest economy in the world. And we can lead the way in responding to the urgent challenges of our time. And San Diego County, as the second largest county in California, can lead our state. I am excited to move an ambitious agenda, both to address the immense challenges our community faces, and also because we have the opportunity and responsibility to provide an example and a path to the rest of the state and the country. From day one, Together, we will focus on the issues that matter most to our community. Taking an evidence-based approach to COVID-19, rolling out vaccines as quickly as possible, scaling up testing, and providing a lifeline to small business and workers who have lost their jobs. Tackling the climate crisis with a real climate action plan that sets a gold standard and is the best in the country. Taking meaningful action on racial justice to redress this deep stain on America's history. Addressing our homelessness and affordable housing crises. Protecting our beaches and our coastlines from pollution and overdevelopment. Increasing traffic and congestion, ending sprawl and preserving our precious biodiversity and open space, safeguarding our communities from wildfires, providing San Diego seniors with affordable in-home care and expanding access to quality, affordable childcare for every San Diego family, strengthening our social safety net and expanding mental and behavioral health services, providing legal and humanitarian assistance to immigrants seeking asylum at our borders, and supporting arts and culture in our community. All of this requires investing in people and sustainable infrastructure. Protecting our coastlines means a cutting edge stormwater capture and treatment system. Reducing traffic means modern transportation networks across the county. Providing better public health and mental health services means essential personnel, especially frontline county workers. 
I will fight to make sure we are prioritizing the human and physical infrastructure we need to deliver a better quality of life for everyone in San Diego County. Together, we will grow the San Diego economy for working families with good jobs in biotech, in green and sustainable and worker-friendly industries, in the caring economy, and in sectors that embrace our unique advantage as a border region. As an economy that spans and connects two countries and two continents, and is the home to diverse and vibrant universities, businesses, and communities. We face historic challenges and we have historic ambition to match. So I'm heartened by the partners I'm joining this morning to improve the lives of San Diegans. This is a new day for our board. I am honored to start my service with supervisors Nora Vargas and Joel Anderson and to join Supervisor Fletcher and Desmond to meet these challenges. And I look forward to working with Chief Administrative Officer Helen Robbins-Meyer and her team. Most of all, I am confident that this county can meet this moment because of the dedication, skills, and experience of our county employees. Our county employees are in the front lines of addressing the COVID-19 crisis, not only the public health crisis, but also the economic and food insecurity crisis. And they have overcome incredible obstacles to each and every county employee. I will make sure that your efforts are always recognized and honored because you are the backbone of the work we do as a county to serve our community. We must seize this moment to put San Diego County on a forward path. And in doing so, we can become a beacon for the rest of the country. Together, we will advance a more moral economy and society with a county government that protects our planet and promotes human flourishing. My daughter's young life is being shaped by these times, but I am hopeful for her future and for ours. We have a lot of work ahead and I am ready to roll up my sleeves and get started. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor-elect Lawson Reamer. The first meeting of the Board of Supervisors for 2021 will take place tomorrow, Tuesday, January 5th at 9 a.m. with the selection of officers for the 2021 board term. The next regular meeting of the board will take place on Tuesday, January 12th, 2021 at 9 a.m. This concludes today's swearing-in event. Thank you very much.